guys have touched on that you're not being quite, um, not nearly as busy. Do you think that living, living in someone as less, a bit more distraction free and simple had allowed you to focus on those certain projects? Yes, especially when I started doing my fashion design, uh, started my fashion design career. Uh, in my early in my early projects, you know, I did a lot uh, design related to the, uh, the heritage, the heritage, and also the nature of uh, of new territories of Hong Kong. And uh, I believe that being a designer from here, you know, I got to design something that related to my group, to my background. That, that proves to be my successful because before me and not many other designers were doing something similar. I think that uh, Dr. Tang, I think you could talk about your map learning program. I think it, <laughs> I think it relates quite a bit to this, and uh, you know, it's in I believe over a hundred schools in Hong Kong, right? Yeah, the mapping learning program, the MIL program, uh, which is a program by my company, S3 China Hong Kong. And it is the first in Asia that we offer uh, our GIS software free of charge to all of the schools in Hong Kong. And it's the first in Asia, since it is the first in Asia, I would strongly encourage in and every of the schools to start uh, learning and using uh, GIS, Geographic Information System. And so every of the school can register through the uh, Hong Kong Education City and get the account to use our cloud-based uh, GIS software. Not only the software itself, but also the uh, maps all over the world that you can use the software to read it, to study it, and most importantly, to analyze it. That is not something that you just use the mobile to take a look, but also how to relate the different map features together. For example, right now, the climate change, which is a hot topic, how the climate change relates to the water level rise, as well as how it relates to the uh, extreme weather, uh, like the typhoon or the other, say, uh, uh, droughts or other kind of uh, extreme weather uh, areas that's been happened. And those are the analytical features that you can use GIS or the, in, the map in learning program that my company offered for all schools in Hong Kong to learn about uh, geographical, to, to learn about geography and to learn about uh, how global use of uh, geographical information to tackle all these uh, different uh, programs. of what mapping learning is. So, I know that you've been talking about smart cities in your book and as the chairman of the Smart City Consortium. Can you paint a picture of what a smart city looks like? And when do you think Hong Kong can achieve that? Uh, smart city is basically referred to a city which is smarter than now. And it is also in general uh, referred to the use of more uh, ICT information communications technologies to improve the quality of life and to, to uh, achieve uh, sustainable development. Uh, at the moment, Hong Kong is, uh, the Hong Kong SA government, SAR government is preparing the blueprint uh, for the smart city for Hong Kong towards 2030. And they have also set up a website to crowdsource ideas about smart city. You're also encouraged to go there to take a look called smartcity.gov.hk and I have a recent visit to uh, Singapore and I found that uh, their smart city development is really uh, one of the uh, quickest in the, in, in the world. Uh, for example, uh, they have in the Orchard Road, which is similar to Unleven Road, and they have smart rubbish bins uh, being put there. The bin itself is not just you throw in the uh, rubbish, that's it. Uh, it is a uh, solar, uh, uh, it, it is also a solar powered rubbish bin. And the reason it has to use electricity 
is because the, after you throw the rubbish in, they can compress seven times. So that means it will enlarge the storage of the, the bins. So in the past, the, uh, the collector, the, the trash collector, uh, had to collect the uh, trash like five times a day, and they are now reducing to uh, once every two days. So it saves a lot of the uh, workforce as well as the energy in traveling to back and forth collecting those uh, trash. And most importantly, it's not just about uh, saving uh, workforce, but also it's more environmental friendly. And it is also a bin uh, that uh, allow uh, that installed with the Wi-Fi router, and that people on the street can always hop onto Wi-Fi and can uh, uh, throw the router on the rubbish bins. This is the kind of example of smart that, in fact, um, Hong Kong should uh, should also take a look and see if it is also something that we might try to uh, bring to Hong Kong and make Hong Kong smarter. Uh, Dr. William, as a, as a designer, <laughs> talk about smart, that's a technology, but what about the, the design of the, the smart city? Do you think you have any, any thoughts you'd like to add about that? I think for smart city, um, we don't design, uh, I should design something that lasts longer. Uh, I always encourage people to don't buy too much fashion, but buy good fashion that lasts. And I think to be a smart person and to be a smart city, and uh, we should have this attitude, uh, you know, to be ever a man. So a smart city can also be a beautiful city as well, right? Yes, you know, smart city should be beautiful. So um, now I think maybe you take a small transition over to maybe your earlier years in Yin Long, of course. Um, and how do you believe that your early childhood, you talk about the library, uh, had a big influence on you, um, are there any other things that had uh, similar magnitude of influence um, on your future careers that maybe you can look on retrospectively now as far as early experiences? Um, I think being in New Long, we had uh, so much space to do things that we like to do because the, I, 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 I think we, we had so much freedom actually from our parents because parents used to be very busy, you know, they, uh, they may have like most families. Most families would have at least four children, four, six, eight, something like that. Yeah, and then, and my well, my my mom has six, and then my my father has two wives. So the, 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 my second mom has ten. So all together we have six. We have six. We have sixteen. Uh, it's amazing. So no parent would have enough time or would have like enough space to take care of you. So you have to take care of yourself. And uh, way back my very young age, I, as far as I can remember, even before kindergarten, I loved drawing. I loved drawing, and uh, uh, drawing not only on a, on a piece of paper, but um, the whole kind of space, the wall, the floor, and floor with like uh, like the, the, the floor on the ancestral wall, which is huge. And I just grab some uh, some some chalk and uh, draw what I felt like. And huge joy in you know, way back my four or five years old. And uh, I believe you know, that was the root of my uh, passion to design and, and art. This is perhaps called innovations. Yeah. Quite. Actually, yeah. No, one, no, one would, no one would ever you know, teach me uh, to do how should I draw. And uh, uh, if, if I should just draw on a piece of paper, I just did it, you know, by uh, my nature. Does anybody have questions for Mr. William Tan? Anybody have any questions? Advances in technology, it's hard to predict what our children will need when they graduate. So what would be your advice? I think 
uh, I think I got your question. So, um, just maybe rephrase for, for William, right? Um, talking about how, how does one prepare the kids for a future where you don't even know what it's going to look like when they graduate, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you I think it, just give them enough space. Allow your kids to do whatever they feel like doing. Of course, you set the limits. I, yeah, I, 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 I brought up in such a background, which uh, there was no limit, <laughs> basically no limit. And so, um, you know, I believe nowadays it's very difficult because children like these children, and they, they grow up in apartments and uh, uh, they, they, you know, they have doors that limit them to go out, you know, to, to mingle with other children, with the nature. And, uh, but unfortunately, this is the fact of uh, modern life. Uh, well, I came from a life which, which was not so modern. <laughs> it was very traditional. And however, you know, coming out from a traditional life, and I have so much space, and no walls and no doors uh, that limit myself. So I think just give enough, enough space to your children. I'm so sorry for today because I, you know, I, I also have, have uh, my own radio program with Metro Radio, and we have some uh, guests that we arranged to interview uh, at the radio station. So I have to run. Sorry about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.